Good afternoon, everybody. Conference President, Mr. Chairman, all of the organizing committee members, and especially Dr. Hassan Furat, I'd like to thank you for inviting us to this wonderful conference and giving us the opportunity to make our presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Professor. I declare no conflicting interest. Today's my presentation is about evolving role of interventional nephrologists in Japan. I want to talk to you the development and the current state of interventional nephrologists and also the current state of Japanese dialysis patients. First, a brief introduction to the current state of dialysis in Japan. This is the total number of dialysis patients at the end of the year, according to the Japanese Society Dialysis Therapy Annual Statistics. The number of dialysis patients is still now increasing, but slowly and uh, will be about 350,000 at the end of 2020. This corresponds to 2075 and 4 per million population. Okay, this chart shows the percentage change of main causes of end-stage renal disease. You can see diabetic nephropathy shown by the red squares has been increasing every year and in 1998 diabetic nephropathy finally surpassed chronic glomerular nephritis shown by the green squares to become the main cause of CKD5D in Japan. Currently Diabetic nephropathy accounts for over 43.2% of all cases. But you can see the rate of increase has been short peaked. On the other hand, nephrosclerosis, hypertensive nephropathy, shown by the yellow squares, has been increasing gradually and account for 14.2% of all the cases. This slide shows the transition of average age of new and maintenance dialysis patients at the end of the year. The ages of both new and maintenance dialysis patients are increasing every year and the average age of both dialysis patients is 70.9 and 69.4 years old at present. The aging of dialysis patients and changes in the primary diseases are causing accelerated and deterioration of not only the cardiovascular system, but also the vascular access conditions. Also, the data from Japanese Society of Dialysis Therapy. Despite an increase of the patients and the aging of the dialysis populations, 97.1% of dialysis patients are managed by hemodialysis in Japan. In other words, nearly all Japanese dialysis patients live with some type of vascular access and under such background, vascular access is an important factor that determines the prognosis of the assist patients. So long-term preservation of access functions 
has been an important subject in Japanese dialysis therapy. As for the vascular axis, the DOP study, an international comparison of dialysis care, provides much information about the vascular axis environment in Japan. According to the DAP study, more than 90% of Japanese patients have an every fistula, which is the majority. Only 8% use artificial grafts, and only 1% use dialysis caster. In contrast, dialysis caster is highly used in other countries. Furthermore, the DOPS study, DOPS means dialysis outcome and a practice pattern study, reveals um, that 95% uh, of every fistula are created in the lower arm and that the time from every creation to fast puncture in Japan is extremely short 10 days compared to Europe and the United States. And these are the characteristics of Japanese vascular access. Despite this completely different vascular access environment from Europe and the United States, the LVF patency rate in Japan is 83% at one year. These are good results. So current status of the risk patients in Japan can be briefly summarized as follows. The number of the risk patients in Japan is still increasing. In addition to diabetic nephropathy, nephrosclerosis, hypertensive nephropathy is increasing as a primary disease, and the aging of patients is becoming a major problem in Japan. Since the majority of those patients are managed with hemodialysis, the vascular access creation and management are considered an important issue. In addition, the status of vascular access is so unique compared to Europe and the United States that the survival rate of the vascular access is very excellent in Japan. Now in Japan, there are three academic societies related to vascular access. One is the Japanese Society for Dialysis Access that was established in 1998 and has been actively engaged in the creation and management of vascular and peritoneal dialysis access. And more, Japanese Society for Dialysis Access has been working with Vascular Access Society in Europe, Vascular Access Society of Americas, GMAP in Spanish, and uh, Asian Pacific Society of Dialysis Access to carry out international activities. In other words, Japanese Society for Dialysis Access, JSDA, is the main organization for vascular access in Japan and is considered to be an important organization in carrying out the mission of ASDIL in Japan. On the other hand, until recently, there is no academic society in Japan that is equivalent to ASDIL. 
by the intervention of nephrologists. However, a group of interventional nephrologists has been holding workshop since 2013 and has held 15 workshops so far. And finally, they founded the Japanese Society of International Nephrology in 2021. I wish them much success in their future endeavor. In order to understand the involvement of nephrologists in vascular access creation and management in Japan, I'd like to refer to the articles shown in this slide. One is a report by Dr. Fukazawa, which was presented at the Research Access Symposium 2017 that was held in Nagoya, Japan, and uh, published in Journal of Vascular Access. And the other is reported by Dr. Ikeda from Japanese Society of Interventional Nephrology in Clinical Experimental Nephrology. The data from JSDA presented in 2017 was based on a study of 16.5 thousand patients in 85 relevant centers. The patient's background of the included patients was almost consistent with that reported by Japanese Society of Dialysis Therapy. The proportion and the composition of each specialist involved in the creation and the repair of AVF, AVGs, and endovascular treatment was studied in these patients. According to the Japanese Society for the Risk Access Report, not only nephrologists, but also urologists, general surgeons, vascular surgeons, and the other specialists were involved in the creation of every fistulas, and 92% of these physicians were involved in dialysis care. Of these, nephrologists were the most common, 33%. For creation of every craft, 27% are also placed by nephrologists and more than 50 persons are praised by nephrologists or urologists. In addition, 96% of every graft creation was conducted by the doctors involved in dialysis management. Moreover, 39% of end vascular treatments for post-operative vascular access failure was performed by a nephrologist. As can be seen, nephrologists account for a large proportion of all vascular access creation and management in Japan, and more than 90% of them is performed by various specialists involved in dialysis treatment. Okay, let's take another look at the percentage of physicians involved in dialysis in the creation and management of vascular access from JSDA's surveillance data. As shown in this slide, more than 90% of vascular access related procedures is performed by physicians involved in dialysis. And I suppose this is one of the characteristics of vascular access management 
in Japan. For understanding the current state of interventional nephrologies in Japan, I will present a paper published in 2018. It's the result of a survey of Japanese certificated nephrology training institutions. This slide compares the frequency of procedure performance and involvement in procedure by nephrologists, non-nephrologists, and their collaboration. In vascular access surgery and in vascular treatment, nephrologists were involved in 34.8% and 39% of procedures. And even, and even in case of including collaboration center, nephrologists who are highly involved in Japan. Thus, Japanese Society International Nephrologies data and the result of survey of Japanese Society of Dialysis Therapy show almost the same result. And a feat can be inferred from both results as an accurate reflection of the situation of interventional nephrologists in Japan. This is a comparison of the frequency of nephrologists' involvement in high and low volume centers. The high volume center indicated by the black squares, has more than 50 vascular access surgeries per year, more than 5 PD catheter insertions, more than 50 endovascular treatment, and more than 10 kidney biopsies. The result shows that the frequency of nephrologist involvement in all procedures was substantially higher in high volume center. This picture shows the comparison of the annual procedure volume for nephrologists performing in vascular access surgery and non-nephrologists performing in vascular access surgery respectively. You can see the result that each procedure volume was higher at instant institution with nephrologists intervening in vascular access surgery. Therefore, it can be inferred that the interventional nephrologist's acquisition of vascular access surgery will be a factor in increasing the number of other procedures. Why are various specialists involved in the therapy in Japan? To understand this, it's necessary to recognize the situation of academic societies related to the RSS treatment in Japan. Both Japanese Society of Nephrologists and Japanese Society of the RSS Therapy have a long history, having been established more than 50 years ago and both have many members, but most of academic societies related to dialysis treatment, including vascular access, are affiliated with Japanese Society of Dialysis Therapy, JSDT. On the other hand, nephrologists who are interested in dialysis therapy and have engaged in dialysis medicine among Japanese Society of Nephrologists, JSN, can be positioned as so-called interventional nephrologists. Nephrologists who are involved in vascular access management are, in other words, nephrologists who are involved in dialysis treatment and their contribution are considered to be significant in Japan.
In other words, it's not an exaggeration to say that interventional neurologists in Japan are the research specialists and the research nephrologists. Well, these are my conclusion today's presentation. First, interventional nephrology in Japan is already frequently involved in procedures such as vascular access creation, vascular access repair, and endovascular treatment. The higher volume center, the greater involvement of interventional nephrologists in the procedure. The involvement of interventional nephrologists in vascular access creation and management increase the involvement of other procedures. In Japan, more than 90% of vascular access creation and management is done by various specialists involved in dialysis care. I like to call these specialists, including interventional nephrologists, collectively dialysis specialists or dialysismists. This is my last photo. The doctor from Egypt had been an ISN scholarship trainee for three months at a facility. We hope that the many experiences he brings back with him will give him a new power, strength, and also we wish our relationship between Egypt and Japan will last for a long time. Thank you for your attention.